Okay, I don't know if this will show up very well. In fact, it's really fuzzy. Let's see if that can help much. Not really. I think that neon sign is making everything quite fuzzy. Well, there's better lighting over here. Just in the La, La Connor shopping area and doing some window shopping. But it doesn't look like things are going to be coming in very good. Hey, if I get up. Can you focus? It's not very focused, huh? There's a lot of unique stuff I wanted to avoid. Uh, it being fuzzy though. The ginger grater. And it's really fuzzy. Hmm. But yeah, you have up and down this dark street. A lot of unique stuff. There's one in particular I wanted to get. That's uh, especially neat. It's a few businesses down. A little street there. Well, not so much. There's this. Wow, it's really dark. The lighting doesn't show very well. There's a f firefighter's museum with old timey types of uh, fire engine things. Some were pulled by a horse cart. One is from 1850. Um, they made it in, all the way in New York. They had old timey gas masks. An old bell to ring. Yeah, it is kind of dark around here. This is probably going to be readable. Yeah, that comes in pretty good. Um, just, yep. So, this is a beautiful district. That's not going to show up at all, huh? There's this uh, piece of wood that shows how wide trees were, which uh, it extends the the length of uh, the width of eight feet, ten feet wide. So it's almost two people standing head to head. Well, I'm really hoping that I can pick up the glass. There's a lot of darkness there. It was mostly this glassware that was fascinating to me, but I'm going to need daylight for this. This is just way too fuzzy. There's a lot of amazing things here, but if, yeah, if you can't pick them up, And, uh, yeah, it's not going to convey how beautiful it looks. Hmm. <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's a really quiet major street. A lot of those glasswares are like $700 and s such. That's a little wags and rags. There's little doggy uh, clothes to keep them warm, human clothes. The wood merchant, he's uh, got some fascinating things. This might show up good. Driftwood with fish drawn into it. Everything's made of wood in there. And they, this is like your $700 stuff. <laughs> that little hutch thing is $700. Um, everything else is probably around that. The wood merchant. 
Yeah, there's a lot of unique things that you could uh, look at here and just stare at in awe. A lot of creativity. It's another interesting bit of art. Earthworks Gallery. See, this is a shopping area. It's really popular, probably in the summer more. Everything is well lit up in here. Hmm. What is going on around here? You got a lot of uh, activity. With the, uh, the boats and stuff. See, there's that small boat that probably heading out to go fishing or something. He's, yeah, leaving a wake in the water. Looking like he's real busy. Um, I see some crabbing equipment. I thought the crabbing season was over. Maybe that's maybe it's certain portions of the sea that it's over. I don't know. Yeah, somebody told me the crabbing is over December 31st. All right. So I slept in the uh, the library parking lots uh, last night, and. That it was okay. It, it got a kind of a noisy at times, but not too bad. Uh, the library, the internet does not work uh, outside the hours at this library either. And La, La, whatever. I forget the name of the city again. Um, so that's three of the Skagit uh, cities in the county that don't have internet uh, at the libraries off. Uh, off hours, so that's that's a bummer. I'm gonna I'm gonna guess that they probably all don't work. So that's that's it. Uh, um, there's just not gonna be any internet access in, in Skagit County. Laconner, that's where I'm at. There's a sign that said five dollars parking. Um, so I guess if I wanted to park here, I'd have to, I'd have to pay in a box somewhere. Um, looks like somebody. Oh, oh, I think I see the box. It'll be right over at the corner of the building. Okay, yeah, that's that's where you pay your five dollars to park along this bay, and these boats have to pay fifty cents uh, a foot. And this, so that means this big old boat would have to pay like $30 for the day or something. $30 every day. Um, you got a lot of activity here. There's uh, crabbing, I guess. That's, that's your crabbing type of boats. So that's a popular activity around here. You can uh, see a lot of people interested in, in doing fishing. If, if you know that's that's how it goes, I believe, is hand in hand is fishing and boating. Um, yeah, this bridge is really cool looking. I'm gonna walk across it. It leads to the island, so there is no land connection between uh, these two pieces of land. It's it's just a bridge, and that'll take you to Anacortes, uh, which they have a library too, which probably is not gonna work off hours either, but. I want to check it out and and see. There's a lot of cool shops uh, around here that uh, I just I'd like to take a look at more of it. Um, yeah, it's hard to do. It's uh it's busy here. Hmm. So yeah, I'm just gonna have to wing it as best as possible with uh, information and 
recording stuff. A lot of neat stuff. Um, there was somebody who dumped some fish off into the other side. I think it was fish, but it really attracts seagulls. And it spread them out all over the place. I don't know exactly what, what, what kind of business they have over there. I would guess that it's kind of fishing and stuff. It's hard to say. Okay, this is Pioneer Park. If you can see, there's all kinds of things going on there. I'm in the upper right hand corner. So, I'm entering into this little park that's going to take me to the, the bridge, I believe. And I don't believe this uh, area is used much. So, it should be a nice peaceful walk. Going up the windy trail here, goes back and forth because the hill is too steep to, to go straight up and they decided not to make uh, steps. So now I'm slaloming like I'm skiing to get up the, the trail. So this this may be a park. I see there's some kind of tank up there. Maybe it's a water tank. They don't have to build it a build a higher platform. They just throw it on top of the the hill or mountain. I don't know. So this is the park where pioneers go. Uh, it, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a very secure little town of 900, that's 900 citizens by itself, the tourism pays for a lot because I've been in smaller towns that don't have such great artwork as this. This one really has high class stuff. Like they're expecting a lot of good money coming in. No overnight camping. And the sheriff would check that out to make sure. <clears throat> but, uh, So, there's a little trail that leads over here, and this goes, this will take you to the bridge. Alright, there's, there's a trail bridge. And, uh, it's really pretty out here, it's chilly. Oh, somebody's going to the Pioneer Park, gonna park in there. Can't imagine the cost. Oh, it's, a, it's quite a busy road. Gotta be careful. And that's the bridge over there. I'm not sure if we're allowed to walk on it or not. There's a sidewalk. I could walk on it, but I'm gonna check out this park first. Where are people pulling into in here? Looks like it might have some good overhangs. Okay, well that car just kept on pulling through. Alright. So there's this 
There's this uh, park you can hang out during the daytime only. It's not lit up. Um, let's see. Park closed dusk to dawn. Yeah. What? <laughs> it looks like a Wi Fi signal. I don't think I. Yeah, it's not going to be free internet. Okay, group camping. Alright. So, Pioneer Park allows group camping. It's a really foggy day today. And, uh, you can go to the water's edge. No campfires allowed. Bathrooms look wide open, the doors are open on them, or maybe it's just well lit. I seriously doubt the bathrooms are open, but it could be possible. Looks like you can get under the bridge. You have a concert area where you can host uh, some kind of entertainment down there. Um, Somebody named Louisa N. Euner. Uh, she gave this park in 1870. She may have staked off her claim. Yeah, that's a, that's a neat bridge, view of the bridge. I don't really, I don't really see any people around. I'm gonna go check out the bathrooms. Yeah, this is the, the area. Okay, I'm approaching the bridge. It's pretty busy around here. It's uh, deeply cut into. You can see there's just these tall rock formations um, with this nice kind of flat road. So that took some time, I'm sure. It's a, quite a busy um, bit, a bridge, so it's it's kind of a hassle to walk across. I don't want to do that. Make a habit of this. There's just cars all over. Okay, no climbing on bridge railing. Check. Unlawful to throw anything from the bridge. Or you could get a $250 fine. Oh, yeah, something accidentally slipped out of my hands. So yeah, this this is the start of the bridge. It's pretty it's pretty daunting if you look down. It's a, quite a drop. So if I wanted to really enjoy a good good long fall. This would be the spot to do it. I don't know if it'd be long enough for parachuting, but uh, it's definitely quite a drop. Now they do have this sidewalk, but uh, yeah, it's it's not very wide. I think this is like an older style bridge, so. It's, it wasn't. It probably wasn't originally designed for uh, people to walk on. And maybe it just doesn't get that much uh, use, even though it feels busy enough to me. There must be stoplights. There might be stoplights because uh, people are coming in strong waves. Yeah, you can see the city over there. And Whatever else, more of the city over there. Uh, the commercial side over here, and then the residents who support all the commercial over here. See, right now it's really quiet, and then and the cars are gonna just pick up. So that's that's crossing this bridge if you can walk. I don't think many people, oh, somebody ran into the rails there. They look bent and scuffed. So, 
That could have been me standing there getting hit. Hmm. Yeah. So there's off to the off to the left is residential, and off to the right is is a. Uh, is commercial. There's fishermen and yacht owners. Okay, my speed is going to be checked by radar. It's have to maintain 25 miles an hour or less. Yeah, this is quite a busy road. It leads to a lot of other businesses. There's like a gas station. Uh, I think the, the air pollution gets bad. There's there's a there's a smell of uh, exhaust right here, and I don't see any cars. So it might be a stagnant stagnant air. That's kind of nasty. I don't really smell pockets of bad air, but right there I did. And it kind of continues. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's getting better now. Oh, I'm entering the tribal community. Okay, so this is this is tribal land. Um, gosh, let's see how that works out. It's not friendly. Oh, there's a sidewalk on the other side. Okay. Yep. Uh, some kind of wastewater treatment plant off to the left there. Big rock formation up here. It's called Shelter Bay. So this is the island I entered onto. So they're they're they got another city. Even though La La Casa or La whatever that other city was called. Even though that's 900 people or so, you still got this city on the other side that counts, which will add to the total. You can see the economic disparity between two uh, cities, I guess, two small villages or towns, where they have a really nice built up area on the other side, and then uh, not so built up on this side. I mean look at this side. It has all this open untended land uh, just left in its natural habitat I guess. And then all this trash on the side of the street and these signs that just keep saying they're, they're bandit signs <laughs> but they're Bandit signs for possibly uh, trying to encourage good behavior by saying a house is drug free. <laughs> so I may not be saying a whole lot, but these these little teepee things attracted me. It's uh, okay. It's like a little tree park. I'll give you descriptions of particular plants. dog heard me but yeah this this side is definitely not built up as I think it's the tribal yeah oh okay <laughs> I just I just walked into Indian reservation and it is definitely a lot more downtrodden than than the other side I did see a, a couple Indians here and there on um, the other side they're just kind of walking around but uh yeah they're the people on the other side the, the pretty much the white people i believe it's nine per ninety percent ninety percent white they they um are really big on security i was i was just hanging out at a um for the internet, I was hanging out at an internet cafe, and they 
there's there's somebody who was like citizen patrol who was on me in like 15 minutes or so. Yeah, okay, there's a lot of stuff to read here. I don't know, I, I guess I could read it. Our food, food medicine tools, our handwork. Um, as you can see, there's just signs. But yeah, this, I mean, on this side, these teepee things are what attracted me. The canoes, they got something about canoes there. These teepee things, they got a weird name for it. View from Twix to Kickswalk. I don't know. I'd say that the tribal Indians are uh, working harder to make it look more natural on their side. What they're staring at, all this highly developed multi-million dollar uh, stuff over on the other side, which I found quite beautiful. I mean, it's kind of nice to see uh, an improvement like that. But okay, if uh, we weren't if we weren't staring at all this development, we'd be staring at this instead. It would just be a bunch of trees. It'd look like this side, pretty much. Uh, back uh, by 1790, um, they had their canoes and fish traps, lived a simple life hanging fish, but instead, we got all this development. So there's a huge disparity between the Indian tribes. The Indians don't even don't have a single. Well, they only have a few boats, mostly fishermen boats, not recreation. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, there's a lot to read on the Indian so reservation side of uh, this waterway. Or you could call it their their islands. The Indians own the islands. They have this really uh, well-worded park where they just show along this coast what uh, their lifestyle was like and some stories of their traditional ways. It's really a fascinating thing. Uh, the food. Uh, I mean. Uh, I noticed that they have this, um, what do you call it, rose hips. I have been, I have eaten them in the past for medicine, but they, they eat them as like a food supplement. And I've noticed there's been a lot of these rose hips around. They're a larger rose hip. Uh, I've, but the, yeah, they, they can grow wild all over the place. And, and then they hold s steady... All, most of them seem to hold steady all winter long. A lot of them turn black. I don't think black is safe. But it could be. Who knows? I wouldn't take the chance. Red is usually going to be safer to consume. But yeah, it's these these uh, these teepees. There's, there's nothing... I mean, it's just all about educating how they used to live. And you have an idea uh, by them preserving this bank that this is what they saw every day <clears throat> but you'd probably see more of their lean-to type of buildings and canoes and stuff it's an interesting li different lifestyle especially in, in contrast to seeing how built up uh, La I keep forgetting the name of that city La something uh, <clears throat> how they're so built up I don't know how many people live in this uh, tribal area. They just have uh, they have quite a few homes though on the side, on the other side of that bridge. So that's that's it. And there's a little sit down area here. You can see it's kind of falling apart. But uh, yeah, I don't really have anything else to say about this. It's just that's it. I ate some. I ate some of those um, 
rose hips, and they're not they're not too bad. It's just I need to learn how they prepare them. They may make a jam out of them or something. They got they got a a pectin. They got a bulk to them. You could you could eat a lot of them. I think they're the highest supposed to be the highest source of vitamin C naturally. Apparently these Indians they mixed them with fish eggs. It says on on one of the descriptions. Um, I don't know. This seems like it'd be good jam or something. These the Indians resisted the the white settler, settlers trying to change their ways, but they eventually succumbed. Um, it was just a, such a major change uh, that the English settlers forced on them with the the language and and lifestyle. In, in trading, they they traded. They got potatoes. Uh, Indians normally don't farm; they just kind of live off the land. But the, the the white settlers were were trying to force them into the farming lifestyle more so uh, to, to get familiar with that. Um, and yeah, you could say that the the change has happened. But I mean, white settlers also we've they've. Uh, Gave, given in by giving the Indians their freedoms to, to fish more often and for larger quantities to preserve their traditional ways too so there's there's a give and take there it's not always easy in those type of cla culture clashes to f come up with good solutions ones that make everyone happy uh, but yeah that's that's what played out here just gonna descend down this road here it doesn't look like it gets driven on much as green as much green is developed on here you can just take a look around you got your ferns and a lot of them very green even in this time of year so it's just um, a bunch of vegetation of all different sorts a viney type of forky vegetation that grows up trees right there. It's pretty aggressive. Climbs the mountain, the wall of the hill. Yeah, it's a very green road. It's hard to say how often it's used. It leads to a park. So you got people who all want to uh, relax at a park coming up here more than this being a thorough way or a through way but yeah there's big tall straight trees <clears throat> and lots of vegetation that hasn't succumbed to any freezing you no, know, I've I've seen a picture of snow all over the place. Uh, it it's not too often that you get that snow. Yeah, the the pioneers really uh, took some time to carve into this mountain to create this trail. I believe that's what we'd be looking at, or just the results of carving into the. The mountain as much as possible to make as uh, smooth of a road into the park as possible. There's been a lot of manipulation by man around here.